just some minor pointers here today. Uh, I'm playing some more of that Swim Discard deck that's pretty powerful in this day and age, and I'm going up against some Spying Calvate. Uh, it's a relatively, I think, difficult matchup, in my opinion, uh, based on what I've seen so far. But we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. Uh, <laughs> at least that's what I was thinking until he played Discard, which is, like, at a, at a base level, it's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> but especially you got the deck that can freely discard cards from their deck. It becomes a lot worse. Uh, but regardless of that, we'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit. And also kind of a minor announcement in case anyone's keeping up with these. Uh, I'm getting more and more like diminishing returns from these VOD reviews because I'm finding it more and more difficult to find games that have like a major point to cover or without, you know, becoming just a straight up gameplay video. Or just kind of a generic VOD review, which is kind of something I want to avoid with these kinds of videos. I want each and one of each and every one of these VOD reviews to be relatively packed densely with information, or to have something new or cool to, uh, to spotlight. Um, <clears throat> and if I do want to do some more generic content, like uh, you know, just gameplay or uh, deck spotlights or combo spotlights, I'll do that in another video. But for the most part, I think I'm going to be dialing back these art VOD reviews a bit to maybe every other day, maybe every three days, maybe twice a week kind of idea, and then look for better games therein. From all the time I play, I want to pick out higher quality games instead of like playing for two hours or something uh, the day of <laughs> and then trying to desperately trying to find a game that, you know, has something to talk about or something worthy of talking about in our VOD review. Uh, context and as you can see like lately i've just been finding it more and more difficult to do so so that's what that, that'll be going on i'm also going to be expanding the content on this channel a little bit but i'll talk about that in that video so uh nothing's really happening here i'm making sure to shut down his combo potential those uh seven strength guys it's kind of an old build of the john covey deck it's kind of the deck that i played on patch but it's not it kind of got usurped by the enforcers which give you disruption instead of buffing and uh, disrupt. You don't want like in that deck that has like a lot of. It, it's actually he's playing like almost an exact. It's like he just kind of like took the Gwenoman deck almost, uh, you know, card by card instead of just kind of sculpting around a certain combo. But anyway, it's not the. It's not, I'm not trying to complain about that. I'm just saying it's interesting because I, I had a lot of fun with that deck actually, and it seems like maybe if you're going up against like Skellica, maybe that's even a pretty good counter, maybe. Because a lot of my cards have a pretty high base strength, except for the one strength that uh, revive ones. It's certainly interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because this card was also used in the officer deck. But that doesn't really change my gameplay much. I'm just going to keep playing out almost like on a script, I feel like. Uh, and again, as with a lot of these, I don't actually look at other people's gameplay. I try and figure it out for myself because that's the fun part. I don't create the decks myself because I'm not a good deck builder. And also I don't really have a creative mind for that kind of stuff. But but still, I like to discover how to play a deck, how you're supposed to go about it. And this is just one of those things. And this is like this Skellige deck is so vastly different from how Skellige used to be. But it, but not. <laughs> but not. Because uh, it used to be like uh, Queensguard. It would be some kind of uh, form of discard with the... Uh, the pirate captains, and now it's kind of shifted to you're still discarding a lot of things, but you're discarding in the it's weird. You're discarding so like it's kind of built around Cirrus, but not. And it's built around high tempo plays with the uh the warmonger, but not. <laughs> it's really weird. This deck is really weird. And then it kind of has these like random wall harpoon uh wheel harpooners rather. I feel like that's supposed to be a counter to swarm monsters, but I'm not really sure. I haven't actually gone up against the last swarm monsters, but even if you do go up against swarm monsters, you're you're not going to be able to, like they don't put a lot a lot of units that could even you know take advantage of that. So I don't know. That card seems oddly out of place, but I'll stick with it. I always got to stick with it. A really big combo around this deck is using res uh, restore on this uh, three strength mage guy, and then using the the bear form on like a one strength. Revive Priestess of Freya card. It's pretty interesting. I'm not sure if I actually get to pull it off here. Actually, I think I do. I think, that, <laughs> I think that's how actually I win. But in the meantime, I'm just kind of drawing out the, the round as long as possible. I'm not really too keen. Like a big thing about this deck is getting down to round three and having virtually no cards left on either side. Except for maybe your like one or two card combo. 
and because uh, they can't compete with the round three where you have uh, Cirrus, the head cutoff guy, and Mark Varg, right? That's just too much. That's too much strength, too much free strength that they can't deal with. Similarly, playing out round two is a lot easier in round two, or rather, losing round one isn't as big as an issue because you have some carryover going into round two. So this deck is really flexible in that sense that you don't want, you don't need to win round one, but you certainly can. So you can control round two to bleed them out as much as possible. But in general, you do want to try and go relatively far uh, in round one if you can. An unexpectedly powerful Swears that he got there. <laughs> kind of unfortunate, but it's not that big a deal. Priestess of Freya is, I think, the weakest card in this deck. So I'm making sure to use my three strength mage because I want to bring it back later with Restore. I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure that Restore is the number one target you're trying to hit. And I win same cards. Uh, so this is pretty much a win. Pretty much a win. Also, what's really neat is that you can have some, uh, there's a lot of nuance to the Cirrus counter. As you can see, like every time, if you don't know what Cirrus is, it's that 7th strength gold card with the, with the red-headed woman on it. And it will tick down every time a card is revealed. Uh, not revealed, <laughs> revived. So at the beginning of the game, you dump all three of your carryover cards into the graveyard and then bring it back. And I actually made a bit of a, no, I didn't. Okay, never mind. Uh, and then you do that. And you get Cirrus in the graveyard, and you get the chopped off head guide in the graveyard, so he comes back. So that's a lot of deck thinning, right? And then you get Morkvark out. And it doesn't really matter how much Morkvark strength has, and I'll discuss this point in a second. Uh, it doesn't matter what what his strength is. The important part is that he's taking down that Cirrus timer, so that in round three, Cirrus will come out the fourth time something is revived, and it's free seven strength. Now, why did I do this? Uh, basically, by the way, a really big point about this deck is using deck thinning, which is why there's so many options in doing so. And generally speaking, the card, the player that plays the most cards wins. But And also, 100% lose rate against Mill if you ever go up against it. But anyway, so why did I pass here? Why did I even try to start playing out this round and then just pass? So I wanted to start playing out a little bit because, like I said before, I wanted to get our last cards down to as few as possible and then use my... My 10 strength, my now 10 strength mage because I used restore and I left it in my hand. I didn't play it. I left it in my hand and then I played instead my shield, uh, my shield, dude. Right. And now as soon as he plays this card, I can't compete with this tempo. He's going to draw all these cards out basically over the time it takes him to catch up to the strength total. So I want to make sure and get at it, get out of this round now and make him overplay one of these. If I kept playing into this round, I would have had to deal with this. 8 strength. I don't want to deal with 8 strength here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass. I made him overplay. True, he gets a bit of deck thinning, but him overplaying is a little bit better. Now, going to this round, I have a 1 card up on him, which is really, really fantastic. There's very little ways I can lose. <laughs> but still, there's a, little, there's a little bit, you know, going on here that I'll explain. Basically, just like rounds one and two were all about setting up for my round three. I made sure not to play too much or play too little in both of those rounds so that when I do get here to this point, where he's going to be slamming down these huge tempo, uh, these huge tempo cards, I'm going to be a-okay. Uh, and I actually made a mistake here. I should have played my four strength guy first because that's the card that I can just throw away instead of throwing this card out first. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't make that big of a difference. So he plays Tibor, and I draw into my heal guy. Now, uh, I didn't actually plan for him playing Tibor, since Tibor is a relatively unused card in this day and age. But it's good that I saved my healing guy. I discarded my Whale Harpooner and saved my healer dude, because as you'll see it here in a little bit. And he knows it's there. And see, look, because this is a habit of mine, uh, just from playing a lot against Reveal. Uh, a habit of mine is playing out the card that's been revealed so I limit the information my opponent gets. However, that's wrong. I don't want to do that. I want to save this just in case he has something, some way to damage me. And instead, I play my worthless card, which I should have played already, and I save my healer card for whatever he plays next. Because he has no options. He either plays this card or he doesn't. And since I have this card, he can't wait on it, effectively. Uh, it doesn't actually end up making a difference here. I was getting this mixed up with another game. In another game, uh, the person had a swipe as their last card, and I had saved my healer guy for the very last, even though I wasn't ex necessarily expecting swipe, and was able to win the game by like two points or something like that. 
Still, though, in general, I saved my more flexible card for the very end. That's the point there. And I have a lot of points to get over here, right? You play t bar he has a 15 strength guy here. That's a lot of tempo, and there's not... Even though I had such a monumental card advantage, it took me until my very last card to actually win the game. And also, Gremis is so good because you can Blood Curdling Roar. Uh, your lowered strength, Morkvark, Olgeard, or even... Uh, What's her face? Even a uh, Sirius, if you absolutely have to. But generally speaking, you'd be best on the Priestess Freya. And if I had a Priestess of my Freya, I would have used it on that. But he got rid of both of them. And I win by two points. Very, very close. I had made a little bit of a mistake there in my ordering and not playing the Skirmisher or whatever it is, the Axeman first. But in general, I set up rounds one and two to make sure they're set up for round three. I didn't just play out run, uh, rounds one and two all willy nilly. I had a very specific mind, a specific gameplay tactic in mind to limit how many cards I have going to three and make sure the cards that I have then are the highest quality. Now, this coaling my hand in round two is something I've explained before, but... This is this is kind of like a little bit of a swerve in that tactic, a little bit different. I could have played out round two a little bit more, maybe try and force out his T-board, and that may have been better. But since he played the relatively high tempo bronze card that allowed him to keep playing out more cards, I gave myself that one, plus one card advantage because he still had to play up to he had to play up to the the different the strength difference first, and then he got the card and he already passed the strength difference, but he still had to play another card anyway because it came uh, the the guy came afterward. Because it came back, it came back to his turn. He played and he overplayed again. But anyway, so that's that. Uh, just kind of some like some nuancey things that you can tell. Like, yeah, there wasn't really anything that big to talk about, and that's just the way these VOD reviews uh, have been going for me. Unfortunately, lately, since I've made so many of them in such a relatively short amount of time, that's why I'm gonna be slowing them down so they can continue to keep that high quality that I strive for on these particular videos. But I will be I will be introducing some gameplay videos, some deck spotlights where it's much more casual. Kind of just like, oh, wow, that's neat. Let's take a look at this, right? And also another game. But that's later. Thanks for watching.